I used to always wonder about this cry that came from Jesus on the cross. Was the Son of God actually feeling abandoned by his Father? His cry was a direct quote from David. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Far from my deliverance are the words of my groaning. So was it a cry of anguish because he felt the Father had turned away from him? Or was he just quoting from Psalms to make sure we knew he was fulfilling prophecy? I've since realized it was both. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made through Him, and apart from Him nothing was made that has been made. So He was with the Father in the beginning when they planned to make mankind in their own image. They saw our fall from the beginning, and they built a plan for that too. the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. He himself would come to open the way back. It would be the place where God's perfect justice would intersect his perfect love, and he would reveal himself once again to the people who had forgotten who he was and is and always will be. So they carefully measured it out and counted the cost. And when the time came, the Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. He who already existed in the form of God emptied himself by taking the form of a bondservant and being born in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, death on a cross. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. And as he who knew no sin became sin on our behalf, His soul was overwhelmed. Matthew says when they came to a garden called Gethsemane, he took Peter, James, and John a little way from the rest and said to them, My soul is deeply grieved to the point of death. Remain here and keep watch with me. Then he went a little beyond them, fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not as I will but as you will. And so the spotless Lamb of God was betrayed into the hands of sinful men who beat him and scorched him. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. And when they had come to the place called Calvary, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on the right and the other on the left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. Just as David prophesied, they have pierced my hands and feet. I can count all my bones. And so Jesus suffered the full wrath of God against every atrocity and sin of man from the beginning to the end. The whole world is guilty of sin. 
There is no righteous person, not even one. There is no one who understands. There is no one who seeks out God. There is no fear of God before their eyes. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son and made his soul an offering for all our sin. David said, Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. God delights in showing mercy, but mercy for a world turned against him came at a cost. Because without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. And as the blood of the spotless Lamb of God ran down, the Father's promise was fulfilled. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. The cross of Jesus Christ is the place where God's judgment and mercy collide. The word mercy literally means unchanging love. Through his suffering on the cross, God's mercy, his unchanging love, has triumphed over judgment. And so he said, It is finished. I have come as light into the world, so that no one who believes in me will remain in darkness.